Hi everyone and welcome back to another Power BI video. If your DAX calculations aren't work the way you expect, the problem often lies into the fundamental concepts like row context and filter context. In our last video, we covered the row context. Please check the link below if you missed it. Today, we are going to talk about the filter context, which decides how Power BI calculates values in a visual. Power BI doesn't just show numbers, it calculates them based on the current filter context. Let's jump into Power BI and break it down step by step. To simplify the concept, we are going to start from a basic example. We are now in Power BI and we have a table. This table is a part of a bigger model. Let's start from this table and then we're going to look at the rest of the model later during the video. This table is a sales transaction table. As you can see, it contains some columns, the product ID, channel ID, region ID. Then I have the date, the quantity, and finally the net sales. Suppose that we want to report on the net sales for this table. Suppose that we need to report on the net sales for this table. The first step is to create a measure and this measure will be simply adding up this column or summing up all the values inside this column. Let's try to do this together. Very simple step, just from table tools, new measure, this will be the total net sales, equals normal sum function, and then I need the column of the sales T table, which is the net sales, close the bracket, hit the check mark. Quick number formatting, let's say currency and zero decimal places. In order to check the number that I just calculated, I need to do it inside the report view, inside the visual. So I'm going to the report view. Let me select a matrix. Inside the matrix, let's try to drop the net sales measure. If you look at the right hand side, inside the sales T table, I have one measure called total net sales. Let me just drop it inside my visual. And here you go, you have the total net sales of $120 million. To try to understand what do we mean by the filter context, let's try to put a, a definition to this number that we have inside this matrix visual. One can say that this is the total column of the net sales inside the sales T table which is not wrong, but in my mind, it is a bit not complete. Why it is not complete? I'm going to prove this to you right now. At the beginning, let me just select any empty space inside the canvas. I'm going to select a slicer. I'm going to look at the different tables inside the model. I have a table for the sales T, which is the sales transaction. Then we have the calendar, channel, product, and region. So let me go to the region. I have a column called region. I'm going to take this column and drop it inside my slicer. And I will have seven regions, Alex, Cairo, Canal, Delta, Giza, and so on and so forth. Now focus on the total. It is 120 million. If I select, let's say, Alex, you will see that the total will go down to 18 million. What this means? This means that the value of the total net sales measure is not exactly the summation of all the values inside the net sales column in the sales T table. However, we can put a better definition or more complete definition saying that it is the summation of the net sales column inside the sales T table in the current filter context. And in the current filter context, what we have now, we have a filter for Alex, meaning that the Power BI engine will go to the region table, which is a search table or lookup table. Inside the region column, he will locate Alex and then use all the data coming from Alex, which will be basically the code of the city or the code of the region. And we'll use this code to filter down the total sales T table to only the lines that includes Alex and then perform the submission. And this is proving that the definition should be the value is determined based on the current filter context. Another important observation, the filter context is not only decided outside the visual, it also can be decided inside the visual. And this is very obvious if we try to add some rows to, to our matrix. I'm going to select the matrix. In the data section, I have the product table. Let me select the categories, put it in the rows. And you will see that now I have the total sales by category. And it is very obvious that we have different values for each and every line. We have a value for accessories different from the values from the bikes. Why? Because there is a filter context created on the row level inside the matrix. And let's try to read the filter context, let's say for the components line. The total sales measure in this case, it is calculating the summation of the net sales column inside the sales T table 
for only the rows containing the category components and for only the region containing Alex. And again, this is the current filter context for the value 2648318. Let's try to think together what other objects or what other things that can influence the current filter context. Inside the report view, you will have a tab called filters on the right hand side. If we expand it, you will see that we have three levels of filters in this area. Filter for the visual, filter on the page, and filter on all pages. All these levels can be used to influence the current filter context and we can try together if you go to the right hand side all the data that we have inside this model let's expand the channel and i'm going to use the channel as a filter for this page once i drop it you will see all the options that we have door to door key accounts retail and so on and so forth and now if we try to select something like door to door you will see that the numbers is reduced because we added more filters to only 2.2 million and if we need to read the current filter context let's say for the total row the value for total net sales measure calculated here is the total of the net sales column inside the sales t table where the channel is door to door and the region is alex and if you try to read the same for any of the individual lines you need to add also accessories as a part of your filter context no need to mention also if we have in the same matrix we have something like columns this will also be a part of your filter context and we can do together a very quick trial let me add something to the columns from the calendar i can just select the month let me drop it inside the columns and you will see that now if you need to read any of these intersections between the rows and column you need to consider the filter coming from the column and also the filter coming from the row you need to consider the filter coming from the slicer which is alex in this case and also to consider the filter coming from the filter pane in the in our case it is door to door one final concept we need to check before closing this video to make sure that we absorb the filter context the right way now we have only the slicer and the visual matrix containing only categories in the rows let's think about the data coming to these two different visuals on the left hand side for the slicer we have data coming from the region column region column inside table called region on the right hand side we have data coming from the product table which is basically the category column we have the different categories we have only four categories in this column also we have data coming from the sales t table why because we are trying to sum the net sales column from the sales t table through the measure net sales so the question now how the data coming from different tables are filtering the net sales measure which is basically depending on the net sales column inside the sales t table in order to understand this let's go first to the model view what i did now i just unselected the region that was selected and i'm going to the model view in the model view you see that we have five tables in this model in the middle we have the sales t table which is nothing but our transaction table also we have five dimensional table or you can say five lookup tables which is the product containing the category and the product i can get the product name and category name region for region name also we have channel to get that channel name also we have the calendar through calendar we can get the month name the year the quarter and so on and so forth the arrangement of a model like this called a star schema we have only one transaction table and we have many dimensional table or search tables and these table are all have relationship with the transaction table so this setup you can call a star schema setup or a star schema model you can notice easily that there is all the relations coming from the dimensional table and going to that transaction table and you can check the arrows that we have here we have an arrow going this side another arrow going again from that dimensional table into the sales table the same for the region table and finally the same for the product table in addition to this you can notice also the one and the star the one is always at the dimension table side and the star always at the transaction table side in our case the sales t side 
the star is just representing the many and the one is just representing the one so this means that all this relation is one to many relations the one side coming from the dimension table and the many side is going to the transaction table if you try to think about how the region table was able to filter the sales table i believe the answer is very obvious now due to the relationship so what happened when we select a certain region you can see here this column representing the, the name of the region when you select a certain name it has in the same row the region id and the common column which is basically the column that used for this relation between these two table is the region id you can see that we have also region id inside the sales t table so when you select a specific name it filtered down the whole table to this name only using the region id that in the, in the same row it travels through the relationship to the other table the table now can be reduced only to the rows containing the region id selected inside the region table and then we perform the expression in our case the expression will be the total of the net sales column now it is very obvious for everyone that the filter context is following the relationships but not all the relationships it follows the active relationships what do we mean by the active or inactive relationship if we select the very same relationship and we go to properties you will find that we have here something called that make this relationship active you can select yes or no the default is yes but we can just do our own no in this case the relationship after applying the changes the relationship will not be active and you will notice that the line is no longer solid it is now a dotted line but what do you mean by inactive relation this means that the relation is there but is not working as a default we have to invoke it in order to use it if we want to use it we need to invoke it through a function or through a measure or something like this let's go back to our report view and see how this can impact our visualization that we have here now remember that we have the 120 million here at the moment we didn't select any of the regions let me try to select one of the region I select Alex, nothing changed, Cairo, nothing changed, Canal, nothing changed. Previously, when we were selecting anything, the visualization, the matrix visual was impacted. Why? Because the relationship was active. Now it is inactive. In order to make this filtration working perfectly or correctly, you need to have it active. So the conclusion is filter context is following the active relationships between the tables. Filter context is the key to understand how Power BI calculates values inside your visuals. I hope this breakdown made sense with you. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and also to check the raw context video linked below. See you in the next video.